um, Mary Castle. Good evening, Chairman Dutton and members of the committee. My name is Mary Elizabeth Castle, and I'm the Senior Policy Advisor for Texas Values Action. We're an organization that is represented by all 254 counties in the state of Texas, and we have over 200,000 supporters, which includes parents in the state of Texas. And with having that many supporters in the state of Texas, we have received countless of emails and phone calls regarding some of the issues related to parental rights in our state. Uh, one of those first issues relates to the library books and that issue. Uh, whether it's McKinney, Texas, or even down in Houston, Texas, we're seeing the issue of explicit library books uh, being either on the library shelves or being in different uh, reading lists that are in the classroom, and there being no way to really track down those books. Now, the Texas Education Code does provide different standards in order to choose textbooks or instructional materials. However, libraries are not under the definition in the Texas Education Code for instructional materials. So librarians have the leeway to order any books that they see fit or that they desire. And that's how we're seeing these explicit books being adopted or being on the library shelves. With that, my recommendation is that the board uh, I'm sorry, that the committee consider a legislation next session to either expand the definition of instructional materials or to actually set in place uh, different safeguards for librarians. Uh, they should abide to rules just like t other teachers um, and be held responsible for the materials that they're purchasing. Another issue that we're seeing also is with parents who go through the grievance process. And I know that this was a part of the agenda as well. Um, many parents are not very educated on the grievance process until they have to go through it, um, and we're very willing to educate them on that. I've held different seminars on how to go through that process. However, when they get to the TEA level, there is kind of a concern of how quickly that process is handled. Uh, sometimes parents aren't even getting a response from TEA once they get to that final level. And that's very important because once they've gotten to that level at where they have to go to TEA, that means that they've exhausted all possible remedies at the school board level, um, and that's their only hope to get an answer. So we do need to have some better organization into how TEA actually responds to these grievance process as well. And lastly, I would like to touch on how books are adopted by the State Board of Education. We heard earlier about how SB 6 was passed in 2011. Um, with that, the SBOE can only recommend textbooks, and that creates a problem. Uh, we have all of these parents, you know, come and testify at the State Board of Education on these textbooks to make sure that they're in an alignment with the TEKS and with what they testified on earlier in the proclamation. However, the school district can do whatever they want. And so you have uh, some textbooks that are adopted at the State Board of Education level, and schools can adopt something completely different. We need to return the power back to the State Board of Education to actually recommend school. Uh, books to the schools thank and you, thank, you. thank you thank you miss castle any questions to miss castle i think mr um Tallarico has a question thank you mr chairman and um miss castle we both know each other and you're not a citizen here to um, testify you represent an organization um so i want to make sure we yes but i am a citizen of austin yes yes sorry but you're here in your capacity with texas values yes right? okay um so i just want to ask a few questions um and I, and I do agree with you about improving the grievance process, ensuring parents are getting a response, increasing transparency, all things that I think a lot of the members on this committee want to work on. I want to talk about the book banning, though. Um, do you believe there is pornography in our libraries here in Texas? From what I've heard from parents and from the list of 300 books that your colleague, Representative Kraus, published, if you look at those books, then yes, I do believe that. And how do you define uh, pornography? Uh, pornography would exist as any sexual explicit material um, that would be obscene. Um, and of course, you know, those standards would probably be heightened for children as well. So I know there were a few examples um, provided, so I just want to make sure I'm understanding from your perspective. If a book uh, were to, for instance, have a, a scene where um, uh, there's incest or, um, you know, a daughter is having sex with their father, would that be a under your definition of pornography, something we got to get rid of? Absolutely. And so if that were in a book for school-aged children, then that book shouldn't be taught to children. So the reason I ask is that I just described a scene from Genesis, the Holy Bible, one of the most important books 
in my life. And the, the, the reason that, the reason I, and I, you know, I think the Holy Bible along with any major religious text should be present in our school libraries, and I hope everyone would agree with that. My, my point is that context matters, right? You could look at the Michelangelo's Statue of David and say it's full frontal nudity, or you could say it's one of the greatest pieces of art ever created by a human being. You could look at Ulysses by James Joyce, probably, arguably the greatest novel ever written, and it has some pretty explicit sexual passages. Now, people of good faith, I think, can have a conversation about what's age appropriate. And, and I think if that's the goal here, then all of us should be able to come together and, and have that conversation. Uh, what we shouldn't do is use inflammatory, conspiratorial language like pornography, like groomers, when that's just not, not the case. And, and that, to me, suggests that maybe this is a larger effort to discredit or defund public education. We've already heard a lot about school choice in connection with this. So my question to you is, how do we differentiate between um, something in our schools that is of value to our students and something that would be pornography, which is legal to, to share with minors? Well, I would first say that, you know, those terms were not used in my testimony, so it's going to be hard for me to, you know, respond to you in that way since I didn't use the term groomer or pornography, so I would like to make that clear on the record. Uh, secondly, um, I would encourage you to take a look at the social studies standards even as they stand because it doesn't seem like they're teaching the Bible in public schools anyway, so I don't see that would be an issue. And uh, third of all, even when it comes to teaching religious texts, they don't teach it in the entirety. They don't teach verse by verse. You know, they're not receiving a theology lesson. So if there's any reference to the Bible, it would probably uh, be a reference to maybe a parable that Jesus taught. So they wouldn't be going verse by verse. And so if they felt like something was inappropriate in the Bible uh, for the child that age, then they probably wouldn't read it. So that's not happening in school either. Um, as far as to like statues and different artworks, I think there has been discussion over time about how that is age appropriate. So if you have a high school who's probably going on, let's say a foreign exchange trip um, and they're viewing the statue of David or something, you know, there have been provisions in law uh, with obscenity and we currently have the obscenity, the exemption for education standards. So that might fall into that. But at the same time, a parent would have the ability to say, you know, whether or not they would want their child to even see the statue of David as well. So, uh, you know, and I, and I want us to keep moving because I know we have a long night ahead of us. Um, but you're in the beginning of my questioning, you said you believe pornography was being pushed in our libraries across Texas, which is a, a huge claim to make and one that doesn't have any factual evidence to back it up. It has and factual sorry, evidence I'll, because your finish. former colleague published a list of 300 books um, that you can look up th that yeah. he has, and I've the got. Attorney General has that list as well. Right. Also, you had parents testify tonight of different books that their children have purchased for school. Um, so, you know, I believe that's evidence in itself. I, the list was not created by a member of this committee. It was created by a colleague of ours who was trying to run for Attorney General uh, of the state of Texas. It, came out right after he declared his, his campaign in the primary. My, my point is that this doesn't seem to be a good faith discussion um, based on your definition of pornography, which I do, you know, don't believe there is pornography in these, in these works that have been cited, but it would apply to, to books that we all cherish like the Bible. So I, my point is I think we have to be careful with the language we use. If we want to have a, a good faith conversation about what's age appropriate and what's not, that's good and healthy. What we shouldn't do is rile people up on social media with, with language uh, like groomers and pornography because that starts to become conspiratorial thinking and it's not healthy for our students, our teachers, or our parents. Yeah, I would like to respond to that. Uh, I have not made any social media posts with groomers or pornography, so I just want to make that clear on the record. And secondly, um, I think that, you know, if you do look at that list and some of the books and you have your opinion to say whether or not you feel like the 300 books are appropriate or not, or you have the right to say what you heard tonight is appropriate in your mind. And so it, that's clear too. But I think that um, when it comes to a child's education, a parent has a right to uh, say what they think is age appropriate. And so if parents are having this concern, then I think it's important for the committee to listen to parents. You know, I think you as a teacher and an educator, I respect that you've been teaching for a while and you have your opinion on these things, but if parents are, are concerned about what their children are learning and they have a stake in their child's education as well, 
uh, I think that should be listened to. You know, if parents are probably saying it in a way that's not as graceful, uh, they need to watch themselves. But at the same time, you know, that was not me in my testimony today, and I would like to make that clear. Yes, Thank you. it wasn't part of your prepared testimony, but it wasn't your answers to my question. Um, you know, and, I, and like I said, uh, the reason that I'm being tough on you is because you're here representing an organization. You're a professional here in the Capitol, and, and so we've got to be transparent about these things. The last thing, that list of books, most of them written by women, people of color, LGBTQ people, the same people who have been attacked in some of the testimony here tonight. I think we have to ask ourselves some hard questions about what's motivating uh, some of this anger that we're seeing in, in organizations uh, that aren't even based in Texas, right? Organizations that are based in other states. Um, and so we have to be careful in this conversation. And I respect anyone, and, I, and including all the people who have testified who have brought up actual issues about grievance processes and, and response time. I'm listening carefully to every person who comes to testify. But what I don't respect is people who demonize teachers and demonize educators for political gain. That's unacceptable and something I won't tolerate up here. Thank you for being here, and, and I hope to continue the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And I would never demonize a teacher, or I understand that it's very hard to choose materials uh, for your students that both please the parents and educate the teachers, or sorry, educate the students as well. Uh, so I just want to make that clear that I would never demonize a teacher or a librarian or anyone else for that issue. Uh, also, I would like to say, you know, we weren't attacking the authors, uh, we were attacking the content of the books. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Any further questions of Ms. Castle? Thank you, Ms. Castle. Chair calls Jeffrey Carlisle.